Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitali, and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I'm going to show you how to make a very classic Napolitano, Napolitana uh, dessert that's called a pastiera. Now, pastiera it's a, like a grain pie that is very traditional at Easter time. We wouldn't, we wouldn't dare have Christmas or Easter without it. And since Easter is coming up, I figured I'd share it with you because it has been requested here quite a few times. And some of you know that this is in fact my all-time favorite, favorite dessert. I've been eating this since I was a kid and it's just very sort of home to me. And I make it a few times a year. Um, it's a little bit more involved than my usual recipes, but I figured I'd share it with you anyway, just because so many of you have been requesting it. It does take about three days to make, and it's got different sort of components of it. The first one is gonna be your grain. And for that, you're gonna need some whole milk, some butter, and some grano cotto, or cooked grain. Now, I've never been able to find this anywhere besides an Italian supermarket, or I actually just take I buy it when I go to Italy, I just buy some and bring it back since it's so inexpensive there. And here it's usually like between eight to twelve dollars a jar. There it's like literally 75 cents. So, three components. So you're gonna have your grain, your ricotta filling, and your pastry. So it takes overall about three days total to make this because today we're gonna work on the grain, let it cool completely overnight. Tomorrow make the pie, let those cool, and then I'll finally show you what it looks like on, on, third, on the third day. Now let's get started. I'm gonna take my grano cotto, like I said, go to an Italian specialty store or check online. I'm sure you'll be able to find it. Get this open. And I'm gonna put this into a large saucepan, juice and all. Now, if you've ever had this, you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that it is just the scent of the mille fiore and this, the sweetness and it's just, it's unbeatable, it really is. And you definitely have to give this a try if you really want an authentic, authentic recipe that makes you feel like you're kind of, you're right there in Naples with me. All right, get this all out of here. And now we're gonna pour in, let's turn this on. Pour the milk right in. Now, you might find that as this cooks, because this is gonna cook for between two to four hours. It completely depends on the kind of grain that you purchase. Some of them cook within about two hours. It's soft and tender and creamy and perfect. Sometimes it takes three or four hours. And if you find that it takes three or four hours and the milk is evaporating too quickly, you might need to add a dash of milk here and there as you go until the grain is completely cooked and it's really nice and creamy. So, I'm adding my butter. I've added my milk, I've added my grain. I'm gonna let this cook on as low as my stove will go, as my burner will go here, as the gas will go, I should say, for between two to four hours. And then I'm gonna let it cool completely, and I'll show you what it looks like actually tomorrow when it's cold and ready, and we can even go in on step number two. So my grain mixture has been in the fridge overnight. Now remember, all we did to this was put milk, grano, butter, in a pot, let it cook. Mine cooked for about three hours, and this is what you're looking for. As you can see, it's really creamy. The actual grain pieces are very soft. There's no harsh skin on them, and that's extremely important. And I've just let this cool overnight in the fridge with plastic wrap covering the top. So, that's done. Let's get going on making the second component to this, which is gonna be the pie crust. Now, if you want to, you shouldn't, but you could use just regular store-bought pie crust, but you need the specific pastry to make, you know, you need this specific dough in order for this to be a traditional pastiera. The ingredients are gonna be some all-purpose flour, granulated sugar, a pinch of salt. You'll need some cold butter, it's been cut into little pieces, it's unsalted. Some vegetable shortening that's been cut into small pieces and, and it's also very, very cold. Egg yolks, some orange zest, vanillina, or you could always use vanilla extract, and ice water. Now, like I said, you could use, make, use regular pie crust. You know, if you can buy it, you know, buy it, or you can make a regular, your homemade pie crust would work great, but you gotta make this one. You gotta make this crust for this pie. So, let's get this going. Now, in this big bowl, I'm gonna mix together my sugar, flour, salt. I'm also gonna add in my vanillina. Vanillina is just Italian uh, vanilla powder. You could use a teaspoon of vanilla extract. If you don't have this, it'll do the job. If I can get this open, it would probably be a good idea. There you go. It smells so good. 
Great. All right, and then I'm going to zest about a teaspoon and a half to two teaspoons of fresh orange. Now, as you can tell, as you will tell, this, this grain pie is very florally. It's going to have the orange in it. It's going to have mille fiore, which is like um, an extract. It's very florally citrusy extract that goes into the pie, and it's essential. Without that and without the grain, just don't bother making it because it, without, especially without the mille fiore, which is what gives you that traditional flavor, it, you won't, it won't come out. So just grate this in here. Alrighty, just mix that in. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of this mixture in my standing mixer that I, I'm actually going to take this out right now. Makes it easier. That I have fitted, I'm going to fit it with the paddle attachment. You could make this in your like standing um, food processor, which is most common when you're making a pie crust, but since there's so much flour, because this batch makes two nine-inch pies, and it's funny because when I make this, I make two nine-inch pies. I never make one. So I only know this recipe, making, you know, doing it for two pies instead of one. So putting this back on. And now I'm just going to mix it one time. And we're going to add in the cold fats. Now it's extremely important that your butter and your shortening is very, very cold. Now traditionally in Naples, in Italy, ever since I was a little girl, my grandma, my mom, everybody makes it with lard. They don't use butter, they use shortening. I don't particularly like using lard, so I like to use mostly butter and a little bit of vegetable shortening to give you that sort of light. The butter gives you great flavor, but the shortening gives you great texture. So all I'm going to do is mix this until the butter is distributed really well throughout the dry ingredients and it's like, it, it's, it becomes like little small pieces running through. And I'll show you what it looks like once it's there. Looking good. I'm going to add in my egg yolks and let that go, 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 go until it's kind of combining everything together. Now what I have here is some ice water, just some plain water and some ice cubes, just keeping it extremely cold because remember you want to keep the fats, the water, everything as cold as possible to really make sure that you can get the maximum flakiness when it comes to that, when you actually bake it. So all I'm going to do is wait for that to mix for just a few more seconds. I want the egg yolks to be mixed throughout really well. Let me give this a scrape with my little spatula. Whoa. That looks good. All right. And now I'm just going to, by one tablespoon at a time of ice water, I'm just going to mix, add it until it's mixed in, and then add the other one. I'm just looking for this to kind of com come together when you pinch it, but you don't want it to make, you don't want to make it too wet because you certainly don't want to keep adding flour and making the dough really dense because that defeats the purpose of having a beautiful flaky dough anyway. That looks about right. Let's see. Yeah, when you pinch it and it holds together, that's what you're looking for. All right, let's get it all out. I'm going to put it on my board here. And then I'm just going to pull it all together and divide that into four parts that are not going to be equal, but I will show you. All right, you don't even bother washing this bowl because you're going to make the ricotta mixture. I make it right in there. No need to even bother washing it up. Okay, so pull this together as quickly as possible and without really adding a ton of flour if you can help it. Now that you've done that, see it kind of comes together beautifully. You can still see the pieces of fat running through. You want to take a knife, cut it in half, and then you're going to cut a third off. That looks like a third, right? That looks more like a third. Let's cut a little bit more. Now this is going to be for your base, and these are going to be for the topping when you make your stripes over the top. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give this guy a little piece to make them even. I'm going to wrap each one in some plastic wrap, because this needs to go into the fridge for about an hour to rest and really, really become cold enough and also makes it easy to roll it out. So, 
One to go, three more, pop them in the fridge for an hour, and when I get back, it'll show you how to make the filling. Now, while the dough is in the fridge for a few more minutes, we need to get going on making the last and final component to this, which is the ricotta filling. Now, what you'll need for it is some good quality whole milk ricotta. Now, what I would suggest is that you go to like an Italian specialty store and get fresh ricotta. It makes a world of a difference. You can see how thick it is. It's not watery at all, and that is very crucial in this recipe. So, ricotta, sugar, eggs, cinnamon, some candied citron, and also some candied orange peel. And this is this is mille fiore, which is like an extract of it smells like flowery and citrusy, like I explained. And without this, don't make this pie because this is the flavor of the pie. Without this, it doesn't taste like anything. So let's get going. I'm gonna make this in my standing mixer. It's I haven't even washed it because it's perfectly fine. I'm gonna add in my ricotta. Now I do completely understand that this recipe is a bit more complicated and a bit more involved than the recipes I usually show here in Lauren's Kitchen, but so many of you have requested this recipe for so long that I just felt like I've been putting it off, you know, for enough time now. So sugar and ricotta are in here. I'm just gonna mix these together for a few minutes. I want the sugar and the ricotta to get mixed really, really well. And um, yeah, we'll get going on the next few, adding in the last few ingredients. And now, go online and try finding these recipes. There's plenty of like online shops, Italian online shops, that you can find these, you know, ingredients like the grano and like the mille fiore. You can find them there. The rest of the ingredients are pretty basic. So, you can search there, you can search Amazon, I'm sure you'll find it. Or even go into like your nearest city. You, there's gotta be a, an Italian supermarket and they'll have what you need. So. Hope that helps, but I still hope that you enjoy this recipe and you give it a shot. So, I'm going to let this go and we'll add in the rest of the ingredients. That's looking gorgeous. Let's add in the eggs and the, van the vanilla. The cinnamon, just a small pinch of cinnamon, or cannella, as we call in Italy. All right, get that mixed up really well. Let that go. In the meantime, I'm going to get my mille fiore opened and uh, we're pretty much ready to go. Last few ingredients to go in until we get this thing rolling and in the oven. All right, we've got to add in our grano that's been cooked. I'm so excited for this. You have no idea. This is my favorite, favorite dessert of all time. I don't even know if I could call it a dessert because while it's sweet, it's not like, like chocolate, and it's not like a cake. It's just, it's its own thing that I grew up eating that I, I just couldn't imagine Easter or Christmas or any ho major Italian holiday without pastita. I just couldn't. So, while that's going, I'm going to add in, I've added in the grano, I'm going to add in the mille fiore. It comes in these little vials like this, or sometimes you can find the actual bottle of mille fiore, in which case, when you add it, you never want to add too much. So start with a very small amount, and immediately, it's, it's pastiera. It's what it is. So I'm going to put that in there. And while I'm going to let it mix for just a few minutes, because then I'm going to taste the batter to see if that flavor really comes through. It, the smell, it's the whole kitchen, I'm not kidding when I tell you, the whole kitchen is filled with the smell. One is plenty. If you add any more than that, you ruin it. So, this is ready. So excited. I'm going to add in my citron, candied orange peel, another really essential ingredient. Now, I will be honest and admit that when I was a kid, the candy citron and orange peel weren't my favorite part about this, but as I get older, I think, with any case, I think you develop different a taste for different things that you didn't always like, and also for textures. I used to be not a big fan of avocados because I didn't like the texture. Now, I the texture is my favorite part, so go figure. Okay, so this is ready. This is good. I'm going to clean up, get my dough out of the fridge, and get this thing rolling. I just rolled one of the big pieces of dough. I just rolled them out onto a lightly floured surface and I put it in a nine inch greased, uh, just 
pie plate, baking pan, whatever. Must be metal. Cannot be glass. Cannot be anything else but metal. That's what I was always taught. So now one thing I do want to tell you is do not panic by any means if the crust starts to fall apart because unfortunately that's just what this pie crust does. But the flavor is unbeatable so you must do it. Texture wise to roll it out is a big pain in the cahoot. So that's not even a real word but if you know me by now you know that I like to make them up. Okay so that's looking good. I also rolled out one of the smaller pieces to make the stripes along the top and you want to make sure you've got a little bit of hanging over here to stick your stripes to. So now just take half of your batter, mix that well, and fill this bad boy up. That looks good. All right, so then all I do is take a little bit of water and I just run it around the edges because this is what the uh, little stripes are gonna, sh strips, not stripes, but that's what they're gonna stick to. I remember making these when we would make these when we were when I was a little girl with my grandma or my mom or whatnot. You would make so many at one time that it was unreal because you, you don't only make them for yourself. You make them for your neighbor, you make them for your sister, you make them for this person and that person. So lots of memories. Just going to I'm gonna cut this very edge because I don't like how drash raggedy it is. And I need to use this little scallop side and just make little strips. Looks good. Doesn't have to be perfect. And you just put them on there and then just when you put that water, you want to just pinch right there. And do the same thing. And then just put a few across. Let me cut this piece a little bit too big. You can always pinch things together, like for right now I'm going to pinch this little piece here. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's just very rustic, home food that is just pretty much amazing. And then all I do is, you can use this little guy, you can use a knife, you can use a scissor. I just like to cut off all the extra. And then you can always take all of the extra, actually I have to use a knife, it's much easier. You can take all the extras and re-roll it and make some more strips if you want to, but I don't. Second one is done. Okay, I like to put them on baking sheet just like that because it's easier sort of to get them in and out of the oven and also if any of the filling were to spill over, you catch it. Now these are going to go into the oven that's been preheating to 375. They'll be in there anytime between from any time within between an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and a half, sometimes even a little bit less than that, maybe an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. Because you're, I'm making two at one time, it takes longer to cook. But you're just looking for the crust to be a golden, beautiful color and the custard itself to be set. Now, if the top gets too dark too quickly before the custard itself gets, you know, sets, then cover it with aluminum foil. But otherwise, an hour and 15 minutes or so until they're golden, Custard set, let them cool on, you know, on your counter for a couple hours, pop them in the fridge covered overnight, and I'll show you what they look like once they are finally set. They have to go in the fridge overnight. I hate to break that to you. No one's sadder than I am right now. But in they go. You're going to have to apologize that I've already dug into this, because let me tell you, last night when this was in the oven, I was very tempted as soon as they came out to just start cutting into one because I couldn't, I just knew I couldn't hold on to it, but I couldn't hold off on eating it, but a pastilla needs to be absolutely cool to the max before you eat it, and it's always best eaten the next day. So, all I did is I let them bake for about an hour and a half at, one, at 375, and then I just let them cool on my counter in my kitchen, covered with a kitchen towel. That's all I did. And now I just cut right into it and started eating it before I even started recording. And my husband was like, honey, we gotta get this on, you have to record it. I was like, Oh my goodness, like this is what happens when I have a pastilla around me. It, it's just, it's, I can't even. I've already eaten half the slice, so. Mm. For me, this is home. This is the thing, no matter what else I'm cooking, no matter how authentic it can be, give me a slice of pastilla and I'm good. 
Like it's the thing that just, I can't even describe it. I just, I adore it. Most of you know, my whole fam most of my family lives in Italy. My mom, my grandma, my aunts, uncles, cousins, they all live there. So I'm not able to spend a lot of holidays with them. So through food and cooking, my heart just feels closer to home. And this is the recipe that I just couldn't imagine not making on a holiday because it's just what connects me so much. Mm. You have to give this a try. If you want a real food, mm, I can't even stop eating. A really authentic Napoletana pastilla. You just want to try. Go to Laura in the Kitchen Comp to get the recipe. I hope that you have a wonderful Easter filled with lots of love, laughter, make great memories. To all my Italians out there, auguri buona Pasqua. To all my Napoletani, arrivate con questa pastilla. Non sai che sto dicendo, no? I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.